today uh, we'll discuss about vaccination for asplenia or pre and post splenectomy status so the post splenectomy patients or patients with asplenia are at a uh, risk of developing rapidly progressive sepsis uh, due to the encapsulated organisms and those encapsulated organisms uh, usually include streptococcus pneumoniae hemophilus influenzae type b and nigeria meningitis so you can remember these organisms using the mnemonic s as i and sin so the infection with these bacteria is uh, dangerous because it can cause rapidly progressing sepsis which has very high mortality rate so this is the reason why vaccination is recommended for those patients who have functional or anatomical asplenia along with those patients who are planned for splenectomy or uh, who have um, already undergone splenectomy. Uh, in addition to this uh, uh, vaccine for these bacteria, uh, influenza virus vaccination is also recommended because this influenza infection, uh, it increases the risk of secondary bacterial infection, particularly uh, by the streptococcus pneumoniae. So, uh, when to vaccinate the patient? So, when splenectomy is planned, uh, then the individual would uh, ideally complete the vaccination they require at least 14 days prior to their surgery. However, if, it, if this is not possible, uh, we can administer vaccine up to 14 days before the splenectomy and the remaining vaccination we can recommence uh, recommends from seven days after post splenectomy or prior to the discharge from the hospital. Similarly, in some cases when splenectomy is unexpected, like following the trauma, uh, we commence vaccination from 14 days after the surgery or prior to the discharge from the hospital, whichever comes first. And similarly for the functional asplenia, the vaccination should start as soon as the condition is identified and the same is with the reduced spleen function. So in that case also, uh, we have to start the vaccination as soon as we identify the condition. So for the vaccination, uh, the first vaccine recommended is pneumococcal vaccine. So this pneumococcal vaccine comes in the various uh, forms, uh, like a 20 valid conjugate vaccine, 15 valid conjugate vaccine, 13 valid conjugate vaccine, and uh, pneumococcal polysaccharide vaccine so among these vaccines pneumococcal uh, 20 valent vaccine or pcb20 which comes with the brand name prevnar 20 is usually the preferred one so if that vaccine is not available we can go for other forms of the vaccine so the first vaccine for the uh, patients who are planned for spleen surgery or who are uh, splenic is a pneumococcal vaccine and PCV20, Prevnar 20 is the preferred vaccine. So it's usually given as a single dose, uh, 0.5 ml intramuscular. And after the single dose, uh, no further doses are required, uh, unlike other vaccines. But if this uh, PCV20 is not available, uh, we can go for the vaccination with PCV15 followed by PPSV23 or PCV13 followed by uh, PPSV23 series. So, in case uh, we are vaccinating with uh, PCV15, usually this one dose is recommended, 0.5 ml intramuscular dose. And, but this single dose should be followed by PPSV23 vaccine. And the minimum interval between these two 15 and 23 vaccines should be at least 8 weeks. So, in case... Uh, PCV15 or PCV20 is not available, then we need to vaccinate the patient with the PCV13 vaccine. So usually we, uh, usually first single dose is uh, recommended, but after the single dose, uh, this vaccine should be followed by the uh, PPSV23 or Numavax23 vaccine minimum, uh, after minimum of the eight weeks. So now let's talk something about this uh, Numavax23 vaccine. Uh, this is a pneumococcal polysaccharide vaccine. So this vaccine is usually administered um, after eight weeks of giving 
uh, either pre-venile 13 or uh, PCP 15. Any patient has already received this uh, uh, 23 PV vaccine prior to the PCV 13, then uh, we need to wait one year to give the PCV 13 vaccine. And normally for the patients who are between the age of 18 and 60, uh, we first administer the one dose and uh, the second dose is usually administered after the five years and the third and the final dose is usually administered uh, five years after the second dose or at the age of the 65 uh, whichever is later okay and if the age of the patient is 60 years or older uh, usually the f uh, first uh, uh, PPSV 23 vaccine is administered and the second dose is scheduled in five years. <clears throat> so this chart summarizes the pneumococcal vaccine. So let's say if patient has uh, not received any pneumococcal vaccine, then the first term, uh, we have uh, two options. So we can directly go with the PCB20 vaccination and then after that no other vaccination will be required. But if this vaccine is not available, then in that case, we can uh, vaccinate the patient with the PCV15 and but this vaccine should be followed by the uh, PPSV23 after a minimum of the eight weeks. So if this vaccine is also not available, then we can go for the option C that is PCV13. So if patient has already received PPSV23 vaccine, then we have to wait for at least one year. And after one year of vaccination uh, with the PPSV23, patient can be vaccinated with the PCV20 and after vaccination with the PCV20 patient will not require for the vaccination. So the next, second option for the, uh, these patients is after the one year of receiving PPSP23 patient can receive PCV15 and after that they won't require any vaccine. So if the patient has received a PCV13 only then after one year patient can receive PCV20 and after that no further vaccine is required. Or uh, we can choose the option B and after the eight weeks patient can be vaccinated with the PPSV23 and after that after five years again patients should be vaccinated with the next dose of PPSP and uh, once the patient reaches the age of the 65 uh, the vaccination recommendations should all again be reviewed and decided based on uh, based on that. So if patient has already received a PCV13 and one dose of PPSV23, then uh, after five years, patient can receive PCV20 and after that, no further vaccine is uh, recommended. However, uh, if you follow the second option, then patient, uh, then after five years, patient can receive the second dose of uh, PPSV23. And after that, if the patient, uh, based on the age of the patient, uh, you might need to decide on proceeding with the next dose of PPSV23. Uh, similarly, if the patient has already received the PCV13 and the two doses of PPSV, then in option B, uh, no further vaccine is recommended. However, uh, after the five years of uh, receiving this PCV13 and two doses of PPSV23, a patient can receive the PC, uh, one dose of PCV20. So this chart is taken from the CDC guideline. You can go through that article for more details. So the second vaccine which is required for the patients who are splenic or who are pre or post splenectomy status is meningococcal vaccine. So this vaccine uh, usually has uh, two types. Uh, one is covalent, con covalent vaccine, uh, which comes in the two form is a conjugate and the polysaccharide vaccine. And the next is the meningococcal um, uh, group B vaccine. So usually uh, this meningococcal covalent vaccine uh, is recommended uh, as a two doses. It's given as a 0.5 ml intramuscular dose. And those two doses should be at least eight weeks apart. And usually booster dose is given every five year. Similarly, this uh, meningococcal B vaccine, for this vaccine also two doses are recommended. And uh, that should be given at least eight week apart. And patient might require a booster every two to three year in certain cases. Third vaccine which is required for uh, required is a hemophilus influenza type B vaccine. So usually the one dose is recommended. Usually it's given as a 0.5 ml intramuscular dose. 
and the booster doses are not required after the single dose and the fourth vaccine which is uh, recommended is uh, influenza virus vaccine and usually it comes in the inactivated form and in the live influenza vaccine form but uh, this uh, inactivated influenza vaccine is uh, indicated annually uh, in usually a splenic or those patients who are planned for a splenectomy uh, live vaccines are, are not indicated so this is a summary of the vaccines which uh, for the patients so like the initial vaccination should include pneumococcal 20 vaccine if available uh, if it's not available then we can go with the pcv 15 13 uh, which are subsequently followed by the pp sp23 vaccines and the second vaccine is hemophilus influenza type b vaccine third vaccine uh, which is really even initially is meningococcal acwy vaccine and the meningococcal uh, serogroup b vaccine so these four vaccines are needed uh, during the initial um, management of the splenia or post splenectomy pre splenectomy patient so on the follow up after eight weeks uh, patients should receive the next dose of acwi vaccine meant that is meningococcal vaccine and patients should also receive the meningococcal serogroup b vaccine and in the long term follow up if the patient has received pcb20 patient doesn't require any further dose of the pneumococcal vaccine however patient was uh, vaccinated with other forms of pneumococcal vaccine like let's say pcv15 pcv13 uh, then or, P or ppsv23 then patient will require further doses of the polysaccharide vaccine after the first dose uh, and for regarding the meningococcal vaccine this meningococcal acwi vaccine needs to be repeated every five years and this meningococcal serogroup b vaccine uh, can be repeated every two to three years but it's not always recommended, but it is uh, used in certain cases only. So regarding the hemophilus uh, influenza type B vaccine, it's uh, no additional dose is recommended. And the seasonal influenza vaccine is usually indicated annually. So there are some additional important points regarding the vaccination in patients who don't have a spleen or who are anatomically a splenic or functionally a splenic or who are pre or post splenectomy status. So usually no, no vaccines are contraindicated in these patients and the providers should ensure that patients are up to date with the scheduled vaccines like a TDAP vaccine or MMR vaccine and um, it is also important to provide patients with the medical alert uh, bracelets because this should help the emergency medical providers to identify the patients in the community uh, that are splenic. So these are the references if you want to go in a little bit more depth then you can go through these articles so i hope this uh, lecture was uh, informative if you have any comments or queries please let us know in the comment thank you so much